Hey everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Sopri. Today it is a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining just a tiny bit and so that means it is perfect for me to make bath bombs. When making bath bombs, it's so important to have the absolute perfect day. If it's raining, miserable, stormy, it's really not a great day. So what I'm gonna do in a minute is just pop on my dehumidifier. I have one that's just from um, Amazon. It's just a little cheapy $79 one, but it does the job. You don't need a fancy one if you're in a small uh, zone and then what I'm going to be doing is doing a whole heap of different bath bombs so I'm going to do a batch of um, a one kilo so 1,000 grams usually I do them in 2,000 grams but this one's just so that I can use my little uh, mold that's here I've had this mold for maybe two years and it is absolutely amazing I really really love it I think maybe two years or a year and a half um, and this one is from the Bath Bomb uh, Press in the US. And all it does is it comes with a couple pieces. So today we are going to be making some sample ones. So it comes with these two pieces and then this. Now, one thing that I can tell you, if you kind of say, well, how do I get the measurement perfect? These are amazing because what happens is you have your cylinder, you drop in this little piece here. And if you can see in there, this leaves the perfect cavity and all you do is literally sprinkle your um, mixture in here and then you can weigh it up. The other way, you know, if you've got your traditional bath bomb way, you literally have to dip that in, dip that in, put them together and twist. This way you don't, you literally just drop that in there put the top on like this and then you just press it with the press so you get the exact amount you want and for me um doing some wholesale bath bombs which we you know have packs of 50 bath bombs and so on and lots of people would go on and actually get our bath bombs and you know if you're in a shop you want them to be exactly 100 or 150 or whatever it is that you know the bath bomb is um, in grams you want them to all be the same so this way really does equate to the perfect um, size so that's why I love it but anyway today like I said I'll take you along as I'm making them and literally I'm just going to be making one of each just so that I have a photo of each because um, when I make these usually I would make these in two or three hundred um, bath bombs at a time like in massive big batches which as I go along my wholesale journey, I will take you along and show you. As most of you know, I usually do retail because I have my own online store. But I've decided to keep that retail, still keep that. But I will also be doing my wholesale bath bombs and soap and, um, you know, my bath whips and so on. Because I have been asked quite a bit over time. And... Um, in the past i've turned it down because you know i've just had too much but i want my business to go to the next level and when you're ready for your business to do that well then you need to make these steps um of course and you know what you don't need to make thousands of them in a go you could make them as you go along as somebody orders it you could make it especially a bath bomb that only needs a couple of days to cure but for me usually i do make as you can see massive amounts in one go because it's just really easy and once you get used to it you get really fast at it but anyway like I said uh, without further ado let's get going and make some gorgeous bath bombs so in front of me obviously I do have this particular uh, mold as I said and this is a standard 120 sort of gram bath bomb but you can you know you can build it up to make it bigger if you want or smaller and then I do have my little bath bomb press this is just a hand one so you just you know use the hand and I'll show you I'll pop the camera down in a minute and we'll do that and then these are what I call my dog bowl um, mixing bowls, which is not really a dog bowl, of course. Um, it's actually just, you know, a big stainless steel sort of chef's bowl. And I've already got my citric acid in it. When you're actually doing tests, you don't need to go and be putting, you know, the exact amounts of citric acid and everything because you want the look so that the customer can see exactly, you know, what they're actually paying for and what they're getting. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But all of these ones won't be sold. These will just be for me. My daughters will just use them. I'll give them to my daughters. But like I said, I just really wanted a picture that was really clear. I do put pictures on my site, you know, I often make them in Canva or something like that so they can get the idea of it but then you do have to make a sample I mean no one's going to buy it you know just off a rough picture that you've drawn or made um, graphically you know you really do need to have the real product but anyway like I said you know my citric acid and everything um, I will leave you my recipe in the bottom um, below and I do get lots of people saying to me I tried your recipe um, and you know i love the recipe but it's not hard enough or you know this hasn't worked or it hasn't you know it's not the same color 
the one thing I'm going to tell you is the process is what changes the whole thing. So, um, yeah, so I really hope that this sort of um, does explain to you that even though someone's giving you your recipe, whether it's from Soap Queen, myself or whatever, they might just have more experience in making them. So, and that's all a part of testing, isn't it? So anyway, um, like I said, um, let's get going and we will make it and um, I'll show you my step of the way. And hopefully you love the bath bombs. All right, everyone. So I have most of my ingredients in here. Um, I haven't put SLSA in as I usually would do, but it doesn't matter. As I said, this is honestly just um, for my, you know, like just for my own recipe. I have actually added in a fragrance, which I think this one's called, uh, I think it's called Fire actually, which is from Pure Candle Supplies. Because as I said, this is just going to be for my family once I make them. Um, and so then I'm just going to pop it in here for anyone that wants to know I actually don't use alcohol at all in my recipe all my all every single one of my recipes um, is just I just I don't know what it is I'm just not 100% keen on it it's just my thing um, I don't mind if other people do it it's just something I don't pop in mine so mine is an all oil recipe so um, and I always say to people you know my recipe is not it's not like a cheap, um, I guess, you know, cheap sort of bath bomb recipe. It is a little bit more of a luxurious one because it does have things like, you know, French clay in it. Um, it also has jojoba oils in, apricot kernel oil. And there's reasons that I actually use those oils. I haven't just popped in anything. Usually um, oils that I use, it just means that they're more of a luxurious kind of blended oil. Um, and that's why I'm actually using them. Also, if I was to do, um, you know, a big batch of wholesale, I wouldn't be doing this by hand. This would be going into my stand mixer. Um, as most of you know, and I say this all the time, I don't have a fancy smancy um, mixer at all. I really don't. Um, I just have like a little cheap one. You don't need a KitchenAid one because, I mean, look, let's be honest. This is, all this is in here is... You know, it's just bath products. I mean, you're not eating it. So, you know, it doesn't matter. You don't need a KitchenAid. I mean, I guess if you were doing thousands and thousands of products, yes, that would be really handy. Um, it, it really would be handy. But you, you don't need it at the start. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And if you can see how this is crumbly, so I know that's not right. And the reason it's not right, right is I haven't actually put my water in. I always put a tablespoon of water in mine so i'm just going to pour this like i said from the kettle but usually i would be using distilled water my citric acid is in it so it will definitely foam up so you just need to be fast and mix it in or just do a little bit at a time and what the water does is um it really does make the bath bomb hard that's one thing i've noticed at the start when i was first making bath bombs i tried the alcohol way i tried no water i tried just oil i tried putting shea butter in it Honestly, the only thing that works is this recipe that I've played around with for a couple of years now. Um, and it is pretty good. So if you see when I've added the water in, like it's fairly good. I might just add a tiny bit of witch hazel. Witch hazel is a plant-based product as well. So if, if you really want to make sure that yours is like, you know, like um, plant-based and things like that, then that would be the next step. Um, is you know just making sure you're right with all of your materials. So I'm just going to grab my witch hazel. I'll just pop it into a little container like this and I just spray. Don't be kind of, um, don't think, oh, well, I'm going to go and spray 30 sprays. Honestly, don't. Just spray one or two because one or two is often all you need. So if you can see that, that's a very, very firm and that is all we need. Um, so anyway, let me get on to this next bit and so what i'm going to do is literally i'm going to be weighing each um item so i'm like you know i'm so i've got my separate container um here and i'm literally just going to weigh what i actually need in it and then i'm going to mix in mica or whatever else i want in that one just to get the color i know i want so 
Um, and so I do have a list here of lots of different ones. So I'm going to start with Blooming Rose, which is my, um, this is one that I use all the time. And a lot of people um, actually ask me for this one. It's one of my own little recipes that I started from the start using. And all I use is for this one is I'm just going to add a tiny bit of pink and some roses and then that is it. And I'll show you how I do that in a second. Sorry that I have so much here. So I'm just going to weigh this up first. Um, and this is a really good way because that way you, you're showing your customers what they're getting too. Um, you know, because you don't want to be showing them something they're actually not going to get. So in here I have my 120 grams because I know that is going to be for one of my little bath bombs. And then all I'm going to do is just put something else in it. And because it's only a small one, we're just going to add a tiny bit of pink. Because this one I don't want to be bright pink, I just want a little bit. You can put dyes or whatever, but I'm just using micas for, the, for these. Because um, the one thing I've noticed is a lot of my customers now are asking not to have dyes. Um, and it's only because I have a lot of customers that really want more of a natural kind of product. I know Micah's not natural for anyone that's going to pick me up on that. But it, at least it's not like a bright dye that will, will colour the bath. And lots of people just don't want that at the moment. So anyway, like I said, I've got my thing here. So I have already put this, you know, in here. And now I'm just going to pop in some roses. These roses as well are from a supplier for baths. So I only ever just put a small sprinkle in the bottom. That's all you need with these. And then literally, I mean, look how easy this is, everybody. This is what I'm saying. And then you're just going to pour it all into here. Um, and then th that way you're getting your exact measurements. So we know it's going to be right. And I've made this particular one, so I know that this is, is fine. Um, anything that drops on the bench, I'll have to pick up just so that I know it's, like I said, the 120 grams that I've been talking about. Um, and this way, you will know exactly what you're going to be getting in this bath bomb. And pop the top on. I mean, it's quite simple really, isn't it? Pop it on there. And then we're just going to pop it in here. Squish the lid down um, so that it's nice and firm. And then obviously you need the thing to push this up. Look, you can use anything, just like one of these containers. It doesn't matter. I do have the bottom one, but I can never find it. I always forget where it is. I'm just going to tip this little pink bit off here. It's just around the edge, isn't it? So... And then that way, this is going to be exactly what um, the customer's going to get because they know the exact size. And so I'm just going to pop these on this little plastic container. If anyone's wondering what this is, it's a silicon um, muffin tray under the bottom. And then I've just got some shrink wrap over the top just to kind of protect it a little bit. And now we're just going to take this off and so this is what it's going to look like. I'll just turn it upside down. And that's it. So now we know that is going to be the blooming rose. So they will know that is exactly what they're going to get. I mean, and that's what I mean. If I didn't measure this exactly, the measurements wouldn't be right and the customer wouldn't know what they're going to get. So this is a really good, just a good sample. Like I said, this is only a sample. It's nothing more than a sample. Um, just for me, it's only for me for, for photos. So I'm just going to pop this out the way and and then I'll get rid of this pink bit on the bench. I'll throw that out. And like I said, so then we've done the first one. I'll go to the next one, which is natural. So this one, all this second one is going to be, is it's just going to have some pink um, clay in it. So I'll clean that out and now I've just I popped everything everywhere, haven't I? And so now I'm just going to look just remix it a little bit. And we'll weigh it up. So then I've got my 120 in here as well. This is natural, like I said. So we're going sorry, it's not pink clay. I'm going to be adding in Kaylin clay. So I'll just add that in. 
And once again, I'm just going to add like a little sprinkle in there. And this is just, you know, because there's no good. I mean, look, I could not add it in, but then the color wouldn't be right. So you need to get the color right because this is what the customer is going to be paying for and they won't be happy if the color's not right. And, you know, just check that it's all good. I might just give it just one quick spray of witch hazel because like I said I just want this to you know um, be the main bit and then you just tap this down if there's anything stuck in it um, and I usually just sort of clean it out you can get anything to clean the edges out if there's anything stuck just because we're making a sample I'll clean that up later this is going to have nothing in it except for like I said just literally just um, the product um, because this one's just a natural one. So hopefully this is showing you guys how you don't have to make heaps and heaps. You can just make a little sample if, if you're designing your new line. So that's why I'm more showing you this. So if you've got like a new line that you want to do, but you think, well, I can't afford to make hundreds of them at once. This way you can just make one of each. And then people will see exactly what you're going to do, won't they? So it's a clever idea. I was, I was thinking about this the other night, how I can actually do this. Um, because I, at the moment I have over a thousand bath bombs sitting here. So I didn't want to do too many. I'll just get my scissors to tap it. Honestly, when I have a bath, my favourite one in the whole world, honestly, is the Blooming Rose. That's the one I really, really love. Once again, we're just going to turn it over onto here. Don't stress if everything is not perfect on these either because remember, it's just for a photo. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, unless you, of course, you want to use it, then of course um you know but all the oils and everything i used are the same oils i'll be using in the customers one so it will be exactly the same um but you know the one thing is you need to get your measurements and your colors right um and so like for that pink i'll need to make sure that that pink is right every time so write down everything um as you're going along just make sure you sort of keep a record of it all and this way too, if you mess it up, it doesn't matter. You know, you can start again. So there it is there. But I will show you guys what I finish anyway. Now, the next one I'm going to do is an essential lavender. So like I said, once again, we'll weigh everything up. We'll just weigh our mixture. So I've got my little mixture in here. I'm just going to tip a tiny bit out because I bit did too much. Now, this is my lavender. So this one is going to have a little bit of purple. But when I say purple, I mean, honestly, the smallest smidge you wouldn't even realise. So let me grab it. So this is the one I'm going to be using, which is a gorgeous lavender. It's a grey lavender. This one's from Sud Off. So I, like I said, I mean, honestly, you need like just the end because it's only a tester. And then I'll put this away. For anyone that know, uh, wants to know, I do buy most of my micas from Sud Off. Um, you know, to me, customer service is so important and their customer service is amazing. So that, that's why I actually use them. Um, just for anyone that wants to know why I use certain companies, that is why. So now we're going to pop this in again. And because this one is my lavender, of course, I have some lavender buds. And we're just going to put a tiny bit because you don't want to overload their bath with that. Um, if ever you're doing floral ones, just don't put heaps in because that's when things go a bit disastrous, you know. Um, because you don't want anyone to be sick or for it to be too strong and so on. If I was making this one for customers, this would have essential oil in it. Um, but obviously I'm not going to be doing that one for this because like I said this is honestly a tester it's the it's the design that you want to show the customer more than anything else so in here once again we're just going to pop it through and 
and that's it we'll grab this one pop it out and it's you know remember this is your sample so it needs to look beautiful and neat honestly the best bath bomb i think is probably like uh 140 grams because it looks really good like the 120 is okay but it doesn't give much of a satin ring um it, it depends whether your customer wants that or not but wholesale most people are looking at the price because they can't just keep spending heaps as well and um, now i'm just going to turn this one also down and pray that it comes out good and as you can see here here you go so there's my little purple one so you know i'm sure you can see what i mean you don't have to you can just do one batch and do all different samples Okay, so we are on to the next one. This one here is going to be a tropical one. And so with the tropical, I actually want a couple colors in it. So it means you just need to get a couple different bowls. So I'm just going to take a tiny bit out of this one and a tiny bit and put it in a different bowl. And like I said, um, you know, literally just, we only need the smallest bit in that. in here as well so now I'm literally just going to be popping in a little bit at a time um, so it's nice and simple really I mean you could just add which I probably will just add one color at a time pour it in and then I'm done with that so you can see here and then we'll just add the blue tip as well is you can literally just pinch it and then that adds like a little dimension to the side um, as well and of course I will pick all that up and pop the top on and this way too if you don't like it you can start again if you think, oh, that's not what I like, or it didn't look the way I wanted, then you can just start it again. There's no big deal. Anyway, I'll get going and make the rest of these. I will bring you back at the end so I can show you my end result of these new little darlings. And um, hopefully this has helped any of you that want to start to sell uh, and you just don't have the money to start in big batches. So, uh, like I said, anyway, I'll be back. Thank you. 